a wonderful um, organization, which all of you young ladies should find out more about. Um, when I first started playing sports, I remember my dad um, had me sit in front of the TV and watch the Battle of the Sexes, the real live version. Uh, Billie Jean King and Bobby Riggs. And he rooted for Bobby and I rooted up, obviously, for Billie Jean, but that set the tone in my life about what I wanted to achieve. And Billie Jean founded the Women's Sports Foundation in 1974, and it's been growing ever since. And because of that foundation, believe it or not, ladies, you were given access to opportunities that you probably don't even know about. So this evening, um, the speakers that are going to be here this evening to chat with you, um, the advice that they're going to give you, and um, how to market yourself after college, I think is going to be invaluable to you. Um, so Candid Conversations is kind of um, a mini ALC. We really wanted to uh, bring the program to student athletes on campuses, um, really part of our leadership initiative, because you guys are going to be the future leaders. So we want to be able to help you in any way we can to make the transition from college athletics to your next career. Um, I like in thinking about life after sports to a retirement account. Um, you know, we all know we have a finite period of time in which we're going to compete in sports, whether it's at the collegiate level or even if, if you decide after college you want to go and, and turn into a professional athlete. But the sooner you can start thinking about life after sports and depositing into that account, the better off you are once you really need to cash in on that retirement account, right? So I think there's no wrong answer. Um, I think you're thinking about different things when you're a freshman than when you're a senior and you're thinking about life after sports. So for me, this is very special to be here because I feel like I have a little bit of hindsight, 2020 hindsight. Um, and my retirement, um, I did a lot of things well, but I also did a lot of things that I wish someone was there to tell me not to do or to help guide and point me into a different direction. And as athletes, sometimes we struggle when we go through retirement for a variety of reasons. But one of those really important reasons, and I've done a lot of research over the course of, say, nine, 10 years after I've retired, uh, and there's commonalities between athletes and what they experience with their transition. Uh, one of those things is the identity, your athletic and being an athlete identity, and how you transfer that after you're done competing in sports, right? You have a team, you have resources, you have people that you're used to being around, and if you're not playing sports anymore, then what are you, right? How do you identify yourself as you're potentially finding something that you want to be interested in, finding a new passion. Um, and so that can be scary for a lot of us, going through this, this time of thinking about what's to come next. Um, I'm not here to scare you by any sorts of the means, but there is really good news. Being an athlete. I still consider myself an athlete to this day. And the good news about being um, identifying as an athlete is that everyone in this room who's identifying as an athlete, participating in sports, you all have special and unique skills that you've been training and preparing and honing in on and getting better at. And if you're intentional about it and you start to bring an awareness to these skills, you'll be far better prepared once you enter the workforce and you're sitting down in an interview and having to answer the questions of, how are you going to be prepared for this job? And a lot of your resume is filled with athletic experiences. So part of what we're gonna do here today is actually show you how the things you've been doing in the pool, on the court, on the field, actually translate into life skills, into skills that are gonna help you in the workforce. And you know what? People want to hire athletes because of these skills. So you are far better off than a lot of other people who don't have sports on their resume. And so we want to help you actually see what those things are um, and help translate those things. They're life skills, right, that you can use in any facet of life, but also skills that will help you not just get a job, but actually thrive 
in that arena as well. I chose Goal Center um, because I think it's important um, as an athlete that we can use this in the real world and that I have individual goals, but they have to align with our team goals as well, um, which I think is huge in the, um, like working, in that you're going to be working on a team, but you're also going to have those individual goals, whereas like you may want a higher salary, you may want to move to a different job, but at the same time, you're working in a business that that ultimate goal is to succeed their own business, not just you. So I think that's a huge thing that I take from soccer to then move forward. Um, I chose that to say that I'm an athlete that has overcome obstacles. Um, like many student athletes, uh, I've overcome obstacles that are both big and small, both personal and on the court or on the field, if that's your support. Um, and I think it's important to kind of take those obstacles and try to overlook them, but also kind of use them as uh, motivation to continue moving forward. And, um, look back on this and say, well, if I can come overcome these things, whether they're very minimal or they're a very major parts of your life, then I can overcome anything that's going to come in the future as well. Um, I chose coachable uh, because when I'm told like, that I have things I can work on, um, if I stroke and stuff, I want to do whatever it takes to get better and succeed. So I think that using those um, values, like the working world, would be beneficial. Um, I also chose coachable, and I think it's really important because um, it's kind of like adapting to your environment. So let's say you work at a different, a new job, a totally new place, and then you just look around to see like. I mean, you can do what they do too. Follow basically the boss, anyone ask for help. And um, I actually decided I'm a volleyball player. And in high school, one of the coaches asked me to play basketball because of how tall I was. And I was like, you know what? Okay, why not? And then I realized how coachable I really am. It's not my sport, and I learned to play basketball. And I actually chose to pick it up again in college. So. Being coachable is kind of comes naturally too. I chose overcome obstacles because I think that as an athlete, one of the things you learn is that it's very easy to uh, for things when things are going well to have a positive attitude. And I think that um, when things aren't going so well, or you aren't living a game, or you're not training well, it's not necessarily as you need to have a good attitude. And I think that. Um, that's something you learn as being part of the team um, that you want to uh, like overcome and uh, be the best that you can be for the team and like for yourself but also for the team. So I think that that's something that you learn as being part of the team. Uh, and um, I chose resilient uh, just because I think uh, we all know that there's things that are really terrible sometimes that happen to us that are really large. And there's also really small like stresses, just kind of like getting to class on time or trying to take a midterm after a trip. And I think that translates into real life. And I think everyone goes through the, like those multiple mental breakdowns, um, whether large or small. And I think that um, as an athlete, I'm able to maybe cry one night, wake up the next morning, and um, take some extra reps or get to class and try to make the best out of it. And I think that um, can really translate real world as well. Thank you. And can we just actually have each of you say your name, your sport, and what college university you're playing with? Um, my name is Maria Trevelpies. Um, I play softball at Fordham University. My name is Kayla Davis, and I'm a first year student on the women's soccer team at the University. My name is Marlene Budna, and I'm a volleyball and basketball player at Hunter College. I'm Morgan Common, and I'm a swimmer here at Manhattan College. And I am Emma Saul, I am a soccer player here at Manhattan College. I'm Casey Monroe, and I play volleyball here at Manhattan College. So let me tell you why I love the Women's Sports Foundation. So I work for the New York Mets. I'm responsible.
responsible for human resources. I meet people like you every day, all day. I met Claire. She was a two-sport athlete at Amherst. And so we just went through this I'm an athlete exercise. And truly, when you're in front of prospective employers and need to describe all of the reasons that you're going to be a great employee, this is a good way to start. So I know the panel behind me has prepared some questions. Are you guys OK to hang out for a couple minutes and answer them as we go through it? OK. Can everybody see over the panel pet? OK, you don't have to kneel down. We're all good. I just wanted to give you some stats. So when you're thinking about um, why it's important to start now as freshmen, sophomore, junior, seniors in thinking about your career, this is why. So an average recruiter, okay, so that's right. An average recruiter is going to take just five to seven seconds to look at your resume because we get thousands all year long. So how many of you have started your resumes? Good, and you feel good about them? Pretty good? Okay, good. Um, well, the average length of an interview lasts 40 minutes. 33% of people know in the first 90 seconds. Why? Because we're listening for your elevator pitch. And that's also in the Candid Conversations book that you have in front of you and some exercises that we're going to practice. 93% of your employers are looking at your social media accounts. Do you know that? So we're looking at your Facebook and your Instagram and Twitter to see what you're saying. Um, so start now and make sure that those types of things are um, appropriate. And it takes, you can't see the bottom, but it takes about 52 days on average to fill a job. Well, thank you all very, very much for coming tonight. As I look around at the uh, bright and brilliant faces and minds in the audience, um, you have such a bright uh, future ahead of you. And thinking about these things now, about your future contribution to society and how you're going to give back and how you're going to present yourself in the best possible way to show your true talents, inspirations, and your hopes for the world, I think it's going to take everyone very, very far. And I wish you all tremendous luck in your lives. Thank you.